My name is Freddy. We are in Estonia. Today is nice sunny weather and now we are going to take a look how to install our 5 gallon tank to 2003 V-Road. Yes, I understand it's not the best bike for this operation, but uh, we don't have any other option at the moment as I promised to show you guys how easy or complicated it is to do it. Actually it's super easy, but uh, yes, it is different bike. It has uh, already 300 rear and uh, it doesn't have the original rear, rear fender, but uh, uh, actually the rear fender doesn't make any difference, uh, is it here or not. Second thing what's uh, different here on this bike uh, compared to original is uh, exhaust system, third one is uh, belt covers, we don't have original belt covers on this bike anymore. And the uh, fourth thing is that uh, we don't have the mod car the be behind the gas tank uh, anymore installed as I don't use them on uh, 300 rear wheel bikes but uh, otherwise it's basically the same like original. Uh, during the process actually there are basically two ways how to do it. One option is that uh, if you have a, a brake bleeder um, available then uh, the easiest way would be to just uh, uh, disconnect uh, the rear brake line uh, from the caliper, just uh, pull the fluid out, disconnect uh, the brake line from the caliper and uh, just simply uh, leave the rear wheel uh, to the swing arm, take the belt off and, uh, and uh, take it away as a one complete unit. Uh, second option uh, is that uh, you just uh, uh, make it like uh, on a regular tire chains that you just uh, put the brake caliper to the side, you take the tire away and uh, the wheel away and uh, and uh, and so on. Just there are like few different ways to, how to do it. Well, on, on this case, uh, why it's uh, again uh, not the best option uh, to show you uh, is that uh, I have to change on this bike the rear tire plus. I have to change the rear pulley as well. Actually, I have to change the belt as well, but I haven't made uh, the new belt ready for this yet. Uh, uh, it, uh, what does it mean that uh, I haven't made it ready? The point is that uh, uh, it's a uh, free bike uh, and it has uh, uh, 150-tooth belt uh, and it's uh, one inch wide and uh, I have to make it by myself. That's uh, that, that, that's the thing. Uh, it, at this width, uh, there is no belt available uh, on what I need, and uh, and this I'm going uh, the belt I'm going to replace later. But otherwise, uh, it's basically the same uh, procedure like uh, on the original bike. I, I will make a later uh, later on video uh, how it's done on stock bike as well. But uh, just give me some time, please. Uh, this section is still the same, uh, ignition switch is uh, still on uh, original location, no difference on this side. What makes this tank special is that uh, you don't have to relocate anything, basically. The only things uh, what you have to do is uh, that uh, you have to cut away the extension plate on the bottom of the frame. This extension plate goes to the bottom of the frame like this. Why? I always cut it away instead of bending it down is that uh, first you're never able to bend it down so that it's perfectly uh, even and perfectly smooth and perfectly look, looking like, like from factory. Second thing is that uh, when you bend it down you screw up your frame paint with it. Here it, it's uh, this uh, was installed on the bike which came from USA from, and, uh, and it was bent down, it had uh, another US made uh, large uh, gas tank on it and uh, as you can see the, the paint is completely screwed up, there is no point for it, just cut it away, I even in, in, with a large fuel tank I also include uh, the slimmest cutting disc available. Uh, what also I will include now is the tank tool that you can uh, uh, open the fuel module nut and uh, you can just close it again without any issues. Uh, plus uh, uh, there is uh, paint uh, included uh, that when, when you cut the frame then you can just repaint uh, with a touch-up paint uh, this edge again and there is no corrosion problems, nothing. Uh, and uh, one, uh, one more thing uh, that uh, when, when you have uh, cut away the extension on the frame 
then uh, you have to also adjust if you want to keep the mod, mod card uh, under the seat here still uh, where it is then you have to just uh, cut it away nicely right right on the edge like this and uh, very simple this part you will discard upper part will go back to frame you can uh, still uh, install your siren to the original location no issues super simple another thing uh, with uh, uh, with uh, cutting away this uh, extension uh, on the frame is that uh, uh, if you bend it down like it was done here so you have to install another extra plate in this case you have to drill holes to the frame you have to bolt it or, or put it with rivets or whatever you know there is no way back anymore you know here you can see also the cut throw of the gas tank and uh, it's really strong, really flexible. Nothing happens with this. I can jump on it, I can hit it with hammer, I can even basically ride over mine with it. Nothing happens. Super flexible, super strong, simple, no problems. Just cut the frame, case closed. So, let's start with the mission. First, I'm going to pull off some parts from the bike, you can see how it goes. It's uh, at the moment uh, 3 minutes after 1 o'clock here and uh, enjoy the show. As you can see, basically it took less than uh, 20 minutes. We have the old tank out, new tank here, ready for installation. What you do next is uh, that uh, I'm going to mark the place where I will cut away the frame extension piece. And uh, when this is cut away, uh, I will just quickly paint the edge, make sure that it's uh, perfectly even, if needed I will hammer it straight again and uh, back together it goes again super simple and uh, another thing uh, what's uh, different uh, with our tank compared to others is that our tank is using original tank lamp or the mounting bracket others use this kind of thingy Whatever you say Uh, 
using so much rubber hammer on the bottom of the frame plate was that uh, it was uh, bent up from the middle. Probably somebody was using a scissor jack uh, to lift the bike uh, from the plate or, or something like this. But uh, the, the best is to make sure that it's perfectly even and uh, not anyhow bent up or whatever, you know, just things have to be perfect. Very simple. I use ruler for marking up the point where to cut. Basically, it's uh, at the very end where the straight uh, line is ending and the radius is starting. At the end of the straight line, I will just mark it up, cut it away, and we are good to go. And uh, another tip, uh, what, what I'm doing maybe differently, is that uh, as there is limited access on the top. For cutting it, I will uh, I will start cutting from the top, and then I will continue from the bottom. That's why I lift it up, and uh, and it's the easiest way for me to do it. As I mentioned earlier, for cutting, I will include with the tank the slimmest uh, cutting disc. And it makes it really easy. Just fire and good to go. Basically we are ready to go now, but I will make the edge smooth now and after this I'm going to just paint it quickly and case closed. As I mentioned earlier, I'm going to use my tip touch-up pencil to paint over the edge what I was cutting. It's super simple with this, basically like ladies do their nail nails all the time with this. That's the part what I was cutting away from there. It was sitting here like this. Boom! Now it's gone. And absolutely no need to bend it down. Senseless. As a second step now, we are going to replace the fuel motor inside the tank. The sad part is that this tank is full, absolutely full, and uh, what should I do? <laughs> it's, 
it, it, it is not comfortable to just pull it over to the other tank but so what let's do it uh, I will I will put the fuel to this one I will pull the pump out and uh, and we are again good to go with this just takes takes a second to get it completed uh, it's actually the first time when I'm going to use my own tool which I will include with the tank the reason is that uh, I just got them this week and uh, whoever is ordering the tank now will get this tool uh, together with the tank it, it makes your life much easier because uh, before I was using all the time a Harley Davidson original uh, a special tool for the tank uh, no, it's made by Kent Moore but um, of course you people don't have access for uh, uh, tools like this uh, probably so if you want to do it at home or whatever you know then when you get my tool included with the tank it makes your life much much easier so just enjoy at least now we can see does it work or not it's the moment of truth like a charm as you see it was extremely tightly closed this nut here on the top of the tank and works perfectly so now we took the main nut away from the fuel module uh, it not this cleaned up now I will clean up this top and here fuel is poured ma ma mostly out to the new tank already so this edge is clean as well absolutely perfect Time to pull out the fuel model. You can replace the gasket, but you don't have to. Another thing what uh, you have to be extremely careful with is when you're installing it, you have to apply pressure to the fuel model and you have to nicely make sure that the gasket is everywhere under the edge of the fuel model and then you can tighten up the nut uh, it, it's uh, you can see it later but I will always keep the nut already on my hand and with the left hand I'm applying pressure to the uh, top plate and uh, then with the right hand I put the gasket in and then I put the nut on and go but uh, there, there, is, there is no need to replace it I, and, uh, and uh, another thing that uh, uh, often, uh, not too often, but uh, sometimes I see that uh, uh, when people are from factory already, they didn't uh, put the nut uh, on to the tank uh, correctly so that it was uh, taking the gasket in between there and you see that it's bent, that it's very simple actually to bend it back to original uh, uh, position as it have to be and make it almost straight again, put it back on, make sure that it, it stays there as it have to be and uh, you don't have any problems with this actually. No need to worry about it. So now you can see this uh, trick that uh, put it on your hand. Yeah, it's not, not comfortable, but so what? Just put it here and uh, now make sure that the fuel module is sitting nicely in its position and uh, now next step is that apply pressure and push the gasket in to the position where it has to stay yes it wants to fight back a little bit but no worries we have plenty of time
So, here we are. Let's put it back together now. One more thing what I'm going to do now is that uh, I'm going to take away the ignition switch from the, its connector. I will put the tank on and then I will uh, connect uh, the ignition, ignition switch again. Now it's good if you clean up the bottom of the tank. Make sure that there is no sand or stones or whatever on the rubber plates. Yep, clean. And ready to go back to the frame. One more thing what I'm going to do is that I'm slightly going to reposition the ground cable. At the moment it's uh, looking towards back, I will just uh, uh, make it more straight uh, on its line and no problem. it's time to put the ignition switch back to its original position. Easy, no need to relocate anything. Just put it back to its original location and bueno. So now I will torque it up with 28 foot pounds of torque. Easy. So now it's time to install the swing arm. Please make sure that you lubricate uh, the pivot shaft uh, well. I use Wurt uh, uh, HHS 2000 for this. It has to be very thick. Uh, oil or, or something like this that uh, make sure that it doesn't go together as as it's uh, dry The swing arm uh, pivot shaft right side uh, uh, pushing. I'm, I'm using Wirt uh, multi spray as a lubricant. It's a really thin oil and it doesn't collect any dust and things like this. So now it's time to torque up the pivot shaft. First, I'm going to add uh, blue Loctite to the threads and then 50 foot pounds and go.
So at the moment uh, it took uh, little less than one and a half hours. We are in the place where tank is on. Basically we are, we are good to go with this uh, if we would have a tire changed already. Unfortunately we have to change the tire here but uh, but otherwise you can see that uh, uh, if we take down all the time when I had to play with cameras and so on it would be uh, ready and finito already within uh, one and a half hours so super simple. Actually I don't need to do it on this bike but I'm, I'm going to still show you what I do with this uh, backside uh, mood card. I, I will cut it uh, just just uh, to show for you that uh, what you have to do and how you have to do. Here we are. On this smart card here on the back, I simply cut away the bottom part of it. You don't need it anyway. You can still mount your original siren for alarm in its, in its original position. You don't have to relocate absolutely nothing. Everything will stay where it came from factory. Super simple. This what I do at the moment is te very temporary for this bike. Only for you to show what you have to do to insto install it. That's the way it will stay here.
you can see, large five gallon tank is on. It took uh, two hours and uh, let's say 15 minutes, uh, including tank chains, rear tire chains. Uh, also, uh, it, uh, I, I left at the moment uh, the rear axle open uh, because. Uh, because uh, I have to change the belt as well, but I have to make the correct belt first in correct width. So I, when I make the belt uh, today, then I will replace it a little later. At the moment I have to run, unfortunately. Uh, I also close the rear brake line uh, when I get back again. And But otherwise, you see, it's uh, super easy, super simple. On original bike, it would be way easier to make it uh, just uh, Nothing, nothing uh, complicated. No need to relocate anything. Uh, no need to go crazy with anything. It's just you will have everything you need with the tank. Basically, just you have to have very basic uh, tools, and uh, you can do it uh, almost on your kitchen table. Thanks for watching, and until next adventures. All the best. Bye.